the way, the truth, and the life. Wayne Cochran Ministries. A voice for Jesus, bringing heaven to earth with God's love, God's grace, and God's word. And now, from Miami, Florida, Wayne Cochran. Last week, we started a new series on the Holy Spirit. And uh, we got a lot of response, so I'm glad you're watching today. This can get to be a very complicated subject, although it shouldn't be. But that's the reason it's been argued about so much in the church. Because it says that if you're not, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, basically what it says, that you can't understand spiritual things, that they're totally confusing to you. And then people argue that if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues, you're not saved. Yes, you are. Get beyond that. You can accept Jesus and you have the Spirit of Christ and you are born again. And now you're eligible to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God. It's two different spirits, but it's not taught that way. And it gets so confusing. But you need the Spirit of God or the baptism of the Holy Spirit to discern things that are spiritual. Now, if you get last week's CD, you'll see that. I'll review a little bit, but not much. 1 Corinthians 2, it talks about the fact that only the person with the Spirit of God can discern spiritual things. Other than that, you're trying to discern spiritual things in the flesh. And then in the chapter, in the book of Acts, it talks about there's some people that had been born again. They had received the Spirit of Christ, but they didn't have the Spirit of God. And the disciples sent two apostles to them because of that. And it says they came there, and although they had received the baptism of Christ, the Holy Spirit hadn't fallen on any of them. And so they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other tongues. So you see, you can have the Spirit of Christ and not have the Holy Spirit. It's two different spirits. But if you receive the Spirit of Christ and are born again, you are a child of God. You're in the family of God. Now you're eligible to receive the Spirit of the Father. Then you can start discerning spiritual things. So don't argue about it. Don't resist it. Just be open to it and receive it if God wants you. You can receive it right this minute. I pray that everyone watching or hearing this CD or tape or program that desires to, if they've received by, by Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray that right now you receive the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, baptize every one of them completely and fully and give them a heavenly language, unknown tongues that they can worship and praise God. Now, we went on to 1 Corinthians 14, and I begin to read this in the Amplified Bible, and it's very revealing. And this talks about when to pray in tongues or speak in tongues and when not to. And now we've made uh, 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 such an argument out of this that we can't even do this. Praise your Lord. I want to look here at chapter 14. And at verse 15, then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that's within me, but I'll also pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. 
I was seen with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that's within me. But I was seen intelligently with my mind and understanding also. Otherwise, if you bless and render thanks with your spirit, thoroughly aroused by the Holy Spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider or he who is not gifted with interpretation of unknown tongues say amen to your thanksgiving since he does not know what you're saying? To be sure, you may give thanks well and nobly, but the bystander is not edified. It does him no good. And Paul says, I thank God that I speak with tongues more than you all, or all of you put together. Nevertheless, in public worship, now here's a key. I'd rather say five words with my understanding and intelligently in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a strange tongues and language. Sometimes we speak in tongues around people just to impress them or to show off. But Paul says there's a time and place. Now Monica and I, my wife, Monica, and I, we followed this, this, these scriptures here pretty, pretty good, and we have really benefited by it. In other words, when it says, I will pray by my spirit and I'll pray with understanding also. We get together to pray over something and we pray in the Spirit. And we ask God going in that as we begin to pray in the Holy Spirit and release ourselves to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit has prayed thoroughly and finished His prayer, give us the interpretation of what we just said so we can pray in the Spirit and pray with understanding so that we can benefit by the prayer and what was said by the Spirit of God. Now we do that, and it works. Some of the greatest instruction I ever got from God, or my wife, either one, we got from God this way. Things that we prayed about, God showed us in a prayer what to do. We do it, and it would work. So we get together, and we just pray in the Spirit, and we just pray until we feel like we've prayed through. And then we just sit for a moment silently and listen. And I really believe the first words that I hear is going to be what the Spirit of God just prayed. Because I've asked God for it to be that. And we speak that out to each other. And that, we believe, is what the Spirit just prayed. And we act on that, and it always works. So if you'd like to try that, go right ahead. I do it, and it works. Okay? That, so some things in 1 Corinthians 14, you really need to get down because it will benefit you greatly. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians in chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Amplified says in 1 Corinthians 12. Now about spiritual gifts, the special endowment of spiritual energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. So they're both about the same thing. So it says, then you know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you unto understand that no man speaketh about the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now therefore, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. And the diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all and in all. Now let me, uh, let me read you this in Amplified. It seems to be a little clearer. Verse Amplified, uh, in Amplified, start with verse 4. Now there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, gifts, and extraordinary powers distinguishing certain Christians 
due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit. And they, they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. It says these things may vary, but it's the same Spirit. And verse 5, and, and there are dis distinct varieties of service and ministration, but it's the same Lord who is served. And there are distinctive varieties of operation, of working to accomplish things, but it's the same God who inspires and energizes them all and in all. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and for profit. Now, I'll continue to read in the Amplified here, verse 8. To one is given in and through the Holy Spirit the power to speak a message of wisdom and to another the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit. To another, wonder-working, faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, the extraordinary powers of healing by the Holy Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophetic insight. The gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose. To another, the ability to discern and distinguish between the utterances of true spirits and false ones. To another, various kinds of unknown tongues. To another, the ability to interpret such tongues. All these gifts and achievements and abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. Now, I want to stop here for a minute. And go back over here. When it talks about different distributions and endowments and gifts and extraordinary powers, in verse 5, that there are different varieties of service and ministration, but it's the same Lord. Verse 6, there are different varieties of operation to accomplish things, but it's the same God. To one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of spiritual illumination of spirit for good and profit. In other words, these different gifts, and the Holy Spirit gives these gifts to different ones for different purposes, but all to profit the body of Christ. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, these are gifts. My, my wife operates in these gifts quite often. I don't operate in these gifts as, as much, but she does. And she gets some incredible messages from God. I remember once in the service during praise and worship, right near the end of praise and worship, I'm standing at the podium and the Lord spoke to her. He gave her a message. She said, maybe the Lord just told me something. And I said, come up here and tell us what it was. She come up and she said, there's a woman here today who watches our TV show but has never been to church here. And the Lord spoke to her this morning and told her that if she would get up and get dressed and come here this morning, he was going to speak to her and give her a message, a word of knowledge. And so I turned around and looked at the congregation. I said, if you are here, who are you? Stand and come up here. It was a little old lady about 70 years old, stood up, started walking to the front. She got up to the front of the podium and she said that morning the, she had been praying because they had told her she had cancer. And the next morning she was to check into the hospital for surgery, first thing in the morning. But she got dressed and come to church like the Lord said. And the message was this. Monica said, the Lord said there's somebody here this morning that has cancer, but he wants you to know that you're healed right now. You have no cancer. You've been totally healed. Well, she got up the next morning and went to the hospital. They prepared her for surgery. 
And they, they, they made an incision and went inside her. But when they got there, they could find no cancer. It was absolutely gone. No cancer whatsoever. No evidence of it. So they just sewed her up. And in two days, they sent her home. Now, she got that message in church the day before. And it was a true message. That's called a word of knowledge. God gives words of knowledge like that oftentimes. And we've had that happen in church and in our meetings many, 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 many times. Especially that my wife will get a word of knowledge. And she's always right. I get words of knowledge a lot on people, children that's run away. I don't know why. But the Lord will give me, I mean, a lot of times on Sunday morning I'll be singing or worshiping or, or teaching. And the Lord will speak to me and said, there's somebody here that's got a daughter that ran away three days ago. I want you to know that she's okay. I'm watching over her. She'll be home within a week. And sure enough, within a week she'll come home. So there's all kinds of gifts that operates. And uh, always be watching for him because he blesses us greatly by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Never cut them off. Now I want to read on as we continue to learn more about the Holy Spirit. And as we do, In verse 11, all these gifts and achievements and abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. For just as the body is a unity and yet has many parts, and all the parts, though many, form only one body, so it is with Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. For by means of personal agency of the Holy Spirit, we were all, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, baptized, and by baptism united together into one body and all made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one limb or organ, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, would it therefore not be not be a part of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not the eye, I don't belong to the body, would it be therefore not a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing come from? If the whole body were an ear, where would it be the sense of smell? But as, as it is, God has placed and arranged the limbs and organs in one body, in each particular one in them, just as he wished and saw fit and best ad adapt adaptation. But if the whole were all a single organ, where would the body be? And now there are certainly many limbs and organs, but a single body. And the eye is not able to say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. But instead, there's an absolute necessity for the parts of the body that are considered the more weak. For those parts of the body which was considered rather ignoble are the very parts which we invest in our additional honor and our seemly parts and those unsuitable for exposure are treated with seemliness, modesty, and decorum. So that they, verse 25, so that there would be no division or discord or lack of adaptation of the body to each other. And if, verse 26, if one member suffers, all the members share the suffering. If one is, dis, is honored, all the members share the enjoyment of it. For you are collectively uh, Christ's body and individually you're members of it. Each part severally and distinct, each with his own place and function. So God has appointed some in the church for his own use. First apostles. Now I want you to listen to the next few words. Very important. First apostles, which are special messengers. Second prophets, inspired preachers and founders. Third, teachers, then wonder workers, then those with ability to heal the sick, helpers, administrators, speakers in different and unknown tongues. Are all apostles or special messengers? Are all prophets inspired interpreters of the will and purposes of God? 
Are all teachers, do all have the same power to perform miracles? Do all possess extraordinary powers of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly and zealously cultivate the greatest and best gifts and graces, the higher gifts and the choicest graces. And yet I'll show you still a more excellent way, one that is better by far and the highest of them all, love. He said, now all of these great gifts, and these are the gifts everybody fight over and clamor for, all of these great gifts by the Holy Spirit through which Christ and God operates, he said, seek earnestly those gifts. But let me show you a better way. So all of those is plan B. All of those. And then he gets to plan A, which is love. And that's where everybody stops because nobody's interested from their own. Because they want these great mysterious gifts, these spiritual seeming gifts but the greatest is love. And how many people really, really, really seek love? And yet, the most powerful gift God has is the gift of love. And we know we have God's love because he said he shed it abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Love overcomes all. Now, 1 Corinthians 13 is the chapter of love in the Bible. Let me read you a little of it. Because most of these things you're going to see in here that people seek after. But then he says, if you have love, you don't have love, you have nothing anyhow. Listen to this. First one, if I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as inspired by God's love far and in us, I'm only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. <laughs> he said, if I don't have this love, all I'm doing is making noise, an irritable noise at that. If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, God's love in me, I'm nothing. I'm a useless nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned in order that I may glory, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it's not self-seeking. It's not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything. Everything that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it'll be fulfilled and pass away. 
As for tongues, they'll be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it'll pass away. It'll lose its value and be superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect. And our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect total comes, the complete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void, and superseded. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and have put them aside. For now we are looking into a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality, as in a riddle or an enigma. But then when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face. Now I know in part, but then I'll know perfectly. So faith, hope, and love abideth these three, and the greatest of these is love. So seek the gifts and all the gifts. Seek the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit in these days and times. We need it. But seek first to love unselfishly. God is love. This program has been brought to you by friends and partners of Wayne Cochran Ministries.